Hi, this is Sean. I recently taught a live lesson about the Barry Harris chord movements, particularly the major six diminished scale. So I'd like to share a section of that live with you. At this point, we were talking about advice on when to use it in your playing, what it is for and what it's not really for. And then we went on to explore the structure of the scale, how to learn it and a few exercises to get good at it. So I hope it's useful for you. Please do leave us a like. It really helps us to grow and do more of this for you. And I hope you enjoy the content. Let's take a look. All right. Let's go. Today, as I'm sure you know, is Barry Harris Day. <laughs> Many of you will probably know that I studied with Barry Harris for almost two decades, you know, sat in that chair and took the heat. <laughs> and I miss that very much. And so today is about the movements. So those people who've asked questions more about improv, these aren't really about improvisation. These are about getting chord movements in your playing, these sorts of sounds. So the chords are not static. That's what it's really about. And so chord movements really take your playing to the next level. And it becomes about using right hand chords as well. So I'm not a big believer in playing tunes like... Doing just this with your left hand, you know? Now I know that's how a lot of people learn and teach. And there is a time for it. There is a place for it. But most of the time, there's a lot more to be had. To be able to get both hands involved and get some chord movements happening as well. Okay, so there are steps to this that I want newer people to understand. I had a look at all your questions. I'll answer the ones that are really relevant to this webinar. And I noticed that most of you are in that phase where you are few tunes, no real freedom, trying to get to the next level. Yeah. So I teach on three main levels. <laughs> I teach on three main levels. Level one is just getting started, learning what the chords are. Level two is that you know, few tunes, but no freedom trying to get further than that. Level three is more advanced things like chord movements. So I normally begin teaching movements around, let's give it a level B, a level 2B or so, 2B or not 2B. I'll, I'll, I'll get to the joke before anyone else does. So do keep that in mind. I think a lot of people believe if they don't understand what jazz players are talking about, which I can forgive you for a lot of the time, having spent a little while on YouTube myself, you know, there's stuff that's very, very heady and it will feel that way if you're not ready for it. So just keep in mind your level. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. There are just more things to get through and to solidify in your playing first. We teach them all on jazz skills, step by step in detail with support. So you can learn that stuff there if you want. But don't leave if that's if you're in that position, because the thing that I found is when the first time I heard Barry Harris playing these sorts of moves, I didn't know what was going on either. But I just got excited and interested by the sounds that we were being made. And that's why I stayed just listening and, and just being fascinated by that. And as I progressed more, I was able to go, oh, that, you know, that that I heard, that the, the thing they were doing. And also, you know, it inspires you to get to the next step from where you are, if you can hear what the fo following possibilities are. So everybody is welcome, but that's the level that we're really talking about, okay? You should have several tunes down before you start to worry about chord movement. You should know what the chord progressions are. You've heard me talk about this stuff before. I'm not going to do too much of that. I could do a whole hour on it. So let's get straight into it. Let's begin with... What's really important? First thing you should do if you're interested in movement is learn the movement scales. There is another step if you're a level two or so. I do have some stuff even on YouTube that I showed on Fly Me to the Moon where you can just insert diminished chords sometimes. Have a look for that if you haven't seen it before. So if you're a level one, early level two, that can help you too. You just put a diminished chord a half step under any chord. So for example, if you're playing Fly Me to the Moon. Now I'm going to D minor, so I take the C sharp, a half step under D minor, that sort of thing. That's something that most people can do. It doesn't work on every tune all the time. You'll get much more juice out of these scales. So the kind of scales I'm talking about, we're going to learn them. This is how you learn them, right? You do anything that you would normally do with a scale. Now I say anything you would normally do with a scale, but to be honest, I'm sometimes 
astounded by what happens even in classical lessons when classical students come but they haven't really drilled a scale beyond going from the bottom to the top and back that's just knowing the notes it's not knowing the scales so I'll show you some things about how to do that let's begin with this scale so let's let's so let's throw it open to the chat box does anybody know what this scale is so somebody type in what is that six diminished trevor's got it right okay somebody said oh ben redmond hello <laughs> somebody said c major bebop somebody says six diminished right okay pierre says c six diminished yes so specifically c major six diminished okay and we're going to see why i i feel it's that way here's what happens if you take every other note let's say you're gonna play one miss one play one miss one play one miss one play one which chord will you end up with somebody type that as well let's get you involved today there's going to be some audience participation c6 exactly thank you nathaniel ben got it as well c6 so if we separate and by the way that leaves this other chord play one miss one play one miss one play one oops miss one play one we get a d diminished but for me that's why it's C major 6 and D diminished because if I take, yeah, let's do it that way. Let's take the D and the F, A flat and B. You've got the D diminished chord at the top, D, F, A flat and B. And you've got the C6 at the bottom, C, E, G and A, right? So that's something to keep in mind when you're learning these sorts of scales. The first thing I did when I learned this stuff is I spent the first year on when I met Barry well, not the first year, but I spent a year just on movements. But I just learned the scales first and then looked at putting them into chord progressions, then looked at them in tunes. I fear that what a lot of people do is they take the information, they go straight from that to application on tunes, right? So just consider it to be a language. If you go for a language lesson, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to learn some words, right? I, you, he. <laughs> then you're going to learn some phrases. I am or who are whatever you're going to learn some things then you're going to put them in sentences and then perhaps at the end of the lesson full-blown conversation so don't try and go from words straight to full-blown conversation and then get frustrated because you think something's not happening this one takes a little time so we have our c6 and our d diminished okay fine what are we going to do well I would do stuff like this I would take let's go here I would take the scale up and down. So if you take the scale up and down, you've got a C major with that added A flat. This is a time where I will run from root to root because we have what we call the octatonic scale, eight real notes, whereas the C major scale is really just seven, right? And rhythmically, the C major six with a diminished figures out rhythmically quite well. Be able to do that from different points. For example, The same scale you know take it from different points really get to know it of course it's a lot easier when you're talking about c isn't it inversions of the chords so if you just take these chords the c6 and the d diminished then learn to do stuff like this i i always begin with students if they're struggling i do this i say look you take the c6 inversions maybe up to the top and i will take the d diminished so they'll play c6 I'll, I'll do it in a different octave. I'll take D diminished. They'll play the next inversion. I'll play an inversion of D diminished. Um, they'll play that C6. You, you see what's happening, right? You do that in one octave. I'm not suggesting you do it in two octaves. <laughs> we would normally do it in one octave as well. It's just to show you. So then you end up with C6, D diminished. C6, D diminished. C6 another D diminished inverted of course C6 inversion D diminished inversion back to C6 that's the basics of the scale okay the major six diminished scale that's really it best thing to do obviously learn that in a few keys I'm not one of these people that says everything you learn you're wasting your time unless you learn it in 12 keys before moving on I actually feel that two or three keys done well are much more useful than 12 keys done badly. I really do feel that because you can start exploring some of these things in your playing once you get a little bit of freedom with them. Yeah. And then the following ones become easier. I have a friend with four children. He says, 
child number four wasn't as hard as child number one, right? You've got more experience, you've got more resources, you've got more stuff. <laughs> okay, so so few well and then move on, in my opinion, rather than 12 badly. Other things I would do to get good at the scale, obviously learn to do that in F, G, the easier keys, B flat, scale up and down inversions of chords. We've got chords up and down. So the next thing I would do is take the chords C6, D diminished, all those same chords we were just doing. In one hand, this is just right hand, no finger changes so far, same fingers on every chord, fine. And you know the other thing that happens when you spend some time doing this sort of thing? First of all, most of my students stop fighting it and start to make friends with just the process. And also, you start to hear the sound. And that's something we don't talk about enough because questions often tend to be about the technical aspects, which is understandable. But the thing you get by just running this stuff is you start to recognize it. And then you know if you're right and wrong. You know if you heard somebody play it. You hear potential for application if it's well enough cooked. Not if it's half cooked, if it's well enough cooked. Okay? And let's look at one more thing. Contrary motion. Very, very useful. So what I'm going to do in contrary motion is I'm going to take the same... Um, by the way, sometimes on a C6 I'll miss my middle finger. Normally on chords, four note chords, I'll miss the fourth finger. So you may see me do some six chords like that occasionally. Normally I mean to do them like that. So I'm talking about the difference between this, which I don't do as often, and this I probably do more often. Okay. Um, and if it's like this, then you've got the same fingers on every chord, which makes life a bit more straightforward as well. Because shape helps. Shape isn't ugly, shape helps. Okay, so contrary motion can be stuff like... This is C6. If I go to the left, what is the nearest? Obviously, these are all... Right, this is something I'll be saying in this webinar, so let's look at it this way. These are all the major notes. These are all the diminished notes, okay? So... Can a couple of you type in the chat box, what is the nearest available major note to the left of here? I'll say that again. Oh, somebody's already got it. Several of you already got it. Great. <laughs> you guys are on it. A is the nearest major note. So if I just take a scale down, this becomes contrary motion. Single note in the left hand, full chord in the right hand. We used to do this stuff with Barry Harris. These simple little things are more useful in playing than you would ever believe. Those are some simple ideas for learning the scale. Now, of course, a couple of different keys. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more, then we have so much for members on jazz skills, including an entire developing fluency course to get you started from even what the chords are, to putting them into progressions, to learning tunes in different keys, getting really fluent with all that before moving on to improvisation, voicings, movements, introductions, endings, learning tunes, accompanying, you name it. And we have a vibrant community where I answer your questions and you get support from the other members too. So hope to see you there. Bye for now.